Where are you, Riza? I can't see you. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I will be starting in a few minutes. We're just waiting for the other people to join. Thank you. Hey everybody, on behalf of Kalam, I would like to extend a warm welcome and a very good afternoon to you. My name is Luke Kelly. I'm the product manager for digital communications here at Kalam, and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. Uh, today, we will take you through how we can efficiently enhance your business communications with Zoom. Before we move on, uh, if any of y'all have questions during the webinar, please feel free to write them down in the Q&A section and our speakers will address them towards the end. Also towards the end of the session, you will find a feedback form link in the chat window. Upon submission, you will get a chance to win exciting e-gift vouchers, which you can use to shop from your local favorite brands. Winners will be announced in a separate email. So without further ado, all I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly take you through uh, an introduction into Kala. Kalam started in 2005 when it was awarded four licenses, which basically enabled it to become an ISP and to provide ISP services. In 2013, Kalam acquired two companies, Lightspeed and NGNS, which then further enabled Kalam to reach and focus on broader business sense where we could not only cater to enterprise businesses, but we could cater to residential as well as the SMB sectors. In 2016-17, Kalam launched Managed Innovation Solutions where we focused on solutions such as SD-WAN, cloud, mobile applications, Microsoft, as well as IPTV. In 2017 and 18, Kalam made another acquisition, this time from a telecom company in Kuwait, known as Tabasul Telecom. With this acquisition, Kalam has now become a regional ISP provider. In 2019, a regional, Kalam launched its regional manager services internationally to locations such as UAE, Saudi, Kuwait, as well as we were PCI DD, a DSS certified for our data centers. This year, Kalam has launched its NOT cable system, which I will briefly go through in further slides. Our strengths. 
Kalam bolsters over 3,000 customers that we serve. We have five offices globally. We maintain international partnerships and relationships. We have over 130 employees. Uh, we have qualified cloud experts. We provide managed solution providers. We are managed solution providers, uh, as well as our not terrestrial cable system. Just a couple of awards uh, from Global Business Outlook in 2020. Kalam has won the fastest growing enterprise business solution provider. And on the same year from the Global Economics, we won the fastest growing telecom service provider for 2020. Just a brief on some of the regional managed services we provide, managed telecom services, managed cloud services with Azure, AWS, and one of them, managed communications and collaborations, iSwap, Office 365, and now Zoo, managed integrated SD-WAN with Versa, and managed cybersecurity with Sophos and ENY. We have two data centers located in Bahrain, one in Alnoy Tower, the other in Jasra, which is the GCIA, GCCIA, sorry. Uh, we have two in the UAE, which is Smart Hub and Equinix, and one in Kuwait, which is at Tabasso. <laughs> Kalam recently launched its MOP, which is defined as no, Kalam's Network Optical Transit. Um, it is a 1,400 kilometer torrential fiber optic cable system that has been laid. Just a brief on the current of some of our clients with us based on each of the sectors. Um, as of 2020, Kalam has been running a digital summit which started back in August. Uh, we're currently in October and what we would like for you to join is we'll be covering the cybersecurity uh, in November. The invites will be sent of course. With that, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce uh, Sam Kaya, who's the Managing Director for Zoom in the Muta region. Uh, he will give you a brief introduction into Zoom and what we're looking forward to going forward. Sam? Thank you very much indeed, Lou. Um, Welcome everybody. I can see we've got 21, 28 participants on the webinar at the moment. So you're most welcome. It's great to be talking to you all. Um, I'm going to tell you a few words about Zoom. Um, but first of all, I want to introduce our team. And I also want to tell you how on this webinar you can participate by asking questions, giving opinions and so on as we go along. So you'll probably see there's a chat bar here on the side. Um, so basically you can chat. So write anything you want in there. We can all see it and, you know, it, it can offer a forum to have a discussion as, well, uh, as we go along. What I'm going to ask right now, just to get warmed up, is out of our 28 participants, um, could you just write in the chat bar right now, if you're currently using Zoom, not currently on this webinar, obviously you are, if you are a Zoom user, you've got Zoom on your phone or on your laptop and you do use it sometimes in your business. Um, tap in the bar, please, uh, in the chat bar, if you're currently a Zoom user. If you're using anything else, for like Teams or WebEx, just write, so write Zoom or write Teams or write WebEx. What's the one you use most? I can see David has said yes to Zoom. Give you a couple of minutes. Okay, Pradeep, yeah, Martin as well. Give me a couple more minutes. Don't worry if you're using other products, you can admit it, we won't do anything. You can still stay on the webinar. Okay. Teams are more okay, great, right? Great. Um, we'll keep tapping away. It's great to engage with you in that way. Uh, the second thing we've got is also Q and A. So please type in all your questions here in the Q&A box. Uh, what we're gonna do is at the end, I think Luke probably is gonna be a master of ceremonies and he's gonna pass the questions around the panel that you see here, okay? So to start my introduction, I joined Zoom um, about the beginning of the year, approximately, just before all of this happened. Zoom was already a very fast growing company. We were growing about 100% a year. And many of the leading customers in the region were using this already, but obviously the, 
that unfortunately the very sad onset of COVID has increased use. Now, in essence, uh, working with people such as Kalam, such as Incube and so on, what we tended to find is as the time has gone by, use cases have changed a great deal. So people have started using the products in ways we could only imagine a few months ago. As Zoom ourselves, we grew, and I'd just like to introduce you to some of the members of our team who joined us in the past uh, few months, all of them having fabulous um, histories in the technology business and the collaboration business. So first of all, I'd like to introduce Munir um, Rashid. So Munir takes care of all our channel uh, business across the Middle East and Africa. So please, you know, you can directly, uh, if you're if you're one of the attendees, if you are a channel business, just message me right here and now on this on the chat bar. You can message privately or you can message with everybody reading your message. Um, Iman joined us also a few months ago. Previously, she had been with Cisco and also in the security industry, both in the Middle East and in the United Kingdom. And Iman is a sales manager and looks over a large part of the region. And finally, you'll be hearing a lot more from him. Um, Riza is uh, going to be doing the next presentation for telling you all about uh, um, Zoom as a product. And he is, in fact, the technical lead uh, for the Middle East. So please feel free, reach out. Everybody's going to put their contact details in the chat bar, uh, as will I. Uh, reach out to whoever you need. If it's a channel based thing, talk to Munir. If it's technical, talk to Riza. Uh, if it's a sales inquiry, please talk to Iman. Um, if you're an existing customer and you need help, talk to any of us. Um, so that's Zoom. We've grown very fast. Um, we really focus on the end user and end user uh, satisfaction. So for us, it, you know, the existing Zoom users who have on the in the sidebar indicated that they're, you know, our priority is always to keep you happy, to make sure that you're receiving a service which um, uh, allows you to conduct and improve your business. And what I would also say to everybody is, as we go through this webinar, think of new use cases. Think, think of how uh, video collaboration in the past few months has revolutionized businesses from education to entertainment, to even personal communication, to banking, online mortgage applications, many different things. Let's think new use cases. Let's think of ways of not only using Zoom to overcome a problem, uh, possibly not going to the office, but also to really create new opportunities and openings for our businesses. Bahrain has always been a hub. It's always been a great trading nation. And I think the ability to extend your businesses across multiple countries and continents using video collaboration is really an excellent opportunity. So that's my little uh, kickoff. As I said, please interact. This is what it's all about. And I'll hand the floor to my colleague, uh, Riza. Yeah, so hello everyone. Um, first, uh, first and foremost, thank you for joining uh, this webinar. So what I will do in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to walk you through um, our product portfolio. Um, and I'm going to leave like the, the last 10 minutes for, for Q&A. Um, please, can you share? Yes. So first, let's talk about why Zoom and the key reasons customers choose Zoom today. So the way we differentiate ourselves from other UC vendors in the market is mainly because our, you know, our main focus on delivering happiness to our customers uh, through a simple, easy to use collaboration tool. Because at the end of the day, you know, today we can go head to head with any UC vendor in the market, but to the end users, it's not about features and functionalities. It's about a simple, easy, reliable collaboration tool, uh, providing them with the capability to join, create a meeting from any device, from any location and from any network. So ease of use, is the key to drive, <clears throat> sorry, end user adoption, okay? And of course, coupled with best quality, providing high definition, uh, best voice quality, best uh, content sharing quality, uh, be able to collaborate from 
any device, tablet, PC, uh, you know, even a conference room. And of course, be able to execute multiple use cases, multiple workflows from one single application. It is that one single application that is based on one core common platform that is going to drive adoption. You don't want to deploy multiple collaboration tools in your environment, which proven not to be proven to be difficult and you know not easy to manage. So of course, we also want the IT to be happy because if we talk about total cost of ownership, we don't want only the users to be happy, the end users to be happy, but you also want the IT to be happy. So our main focus is on delivering happiness to both the IT and the end users, because the IT is going to roll out that simple solution to their end users. So they are definitely looking for, uh, you know, uh, a simplified administration and advanced adoption metrics. So my theory when it comes to collaboration, and I've been in the collaboration industry for more than 25 years, um, covering customers globally in the United States, in the Middle East, and Africa. And one of their key reasons why they, you know, they, they basically, once, once they invest in a solution and they don't use it because of end user adoption. So ease of use plus great quality plus one application, one platform, that leads to end user adoption. And definitely that leads to happy customer. So next. So if we go through our unified communication platform, it all started eight years ago around voice, video, content sharing, webinars. And then we extended the value of our unified communication platform to conferencing room technologies. With our Zoom room system, which is a software-based system, now you can transform a traditional conference room into a Zoom room. And that basically going to deliver a, a uh, Zoom room you know, experience. So, and then of course, leveraging your existing investment. So if you already invested in third party uh, SIP and H.3 to three devices such as Polycom, Cisco, or even LifeSize or any open SIP and H.3 to three device, you can always bring in that uh, device into the Zoom meeting. So with no video interop service in the middle, it's all done through our gateways in the cloud. So, um, and then, you know, we extended the value of our conferencing room technologies through the feedback we got from our customers to include digital signage and scheduling display. And then extending the value of both our unified communication platform and our conferencing room technology through the use of our developers and through our open APIs and basically uh, uh, application build for our app marketplace. And then last but not least, what we did three years ago, we brought in that telephony system into the same application, into the same core common platform. So now Zoom phone is part of the same application, it's part of the same architecture. So what we did, we believe that the future of collaboration will be a video PBX. So basically bringing in that Zoom meeting service that we have in the cloud and our telephony service that we have into, uh, in the cloud into, into a one single application, into one single core common platform. So you don't need to roll out multiple applications to your end users, one for video, one for content sharing, another one for phone. With Zoom, it's one single application. And that's what basically going to drive uh, you know, end user adoption. Next, please. So what makes Zoom different? It's architected for reliability and scale. Today, we can, um, we can uh, fix up to 45% packet loss. And what doesn't matter if you, have, if you are working from a remote location, if your network bandwidth is poor, we can adapt to that 
to that uh, natural conditions, to those natural conditions. So um, our service is available up to 99.99% uptime. It's thanks to our active, active architecture. Uh, we have more than 17 data centers today globally, and we keep adding more and more data centers, uh, data centers every day. If you want to check our service uptime, you are free to go to uptime.zoom.us, and that will give you an idea how much Zoom is reliable. Next, please. So let's talk in one slide and cover uh, our product portfolio. So it all started with Zoom meetings. Zoom meetings, this is a Zoom meeting, you know, you can scale up to 1000 participants. No one can match it today. No other UC vendor can match it today. Up to 1000 participants, you can have those participants in high definition, in standard definition, it doesn't matter. We can adapt to their network conditions thanks to our application layer quality of service. So um, it's not only you can get four by seven by seven layout up to 49 active speakers. So if you have a meeting with 400 participants, you will get, you will get the option, you will have the option to flip with you know, multiple pages of 49 active speakers. Um, so uh, you get all the great features and functionalities with Zoom meetings, local recording, cloud recording, um, all the breakout room sessions, uh, you can do uh, in-meeting controls, you get the chat, chat uh, and so on. So it's not only you get the, the collaboration piece, but you also got the internal communication and collaboration piece with chat. Uh, you can create uh, private, public, share channels, and you can also do video collaboration at the same time. Zoom webinars, uh, again, no one can match this. No, no one can match our, our scale. We can go up to 50,000 participants today. So you can have panelists like this one. We are doing a Zoom webinar. Uh, no one can scale at, at this number today. Uh, you also can have up to unlimited number of panelists on the, on the webinar. Uh, you have full controls, um, same as the Zoom meeting. You can have uh, translators. We support more than 10 plus languages and up to 20 translators on a single WebEx for a specific use case, uh, uh, sorry, webinar. And, and of course, uh, we support 1080p and 720p as well. So uh, then again, you know, uh, having that consistent, having that experience from, uh, from Zoom meetings and Zoom webinars, you want to maintain a consistent user experience if you are going to uh, enable a physical location where your end users uh, want to communicate over video. So having that consistent experience, uh, moving from a client to a Zoom room, okay? So Zoom room is basically, you get the same user experience what you get today with a Zoom client. Uh, you get high definition, um, same uh, you know, uh, controls you get on the, on the Zoom uh, room controller. Uh, simple, easy to use, and it's one click to join. Uh, it, whether that is a Zoom meeting, you can also join a Microsoft Teams meeting, and you can even join a WebEx meeting from that system. So it's software-based, and it provides you consistent user experience uh, when moving away from the client. So Zoom Room Connector, it's basically, there's no video interrupt service. Zoom Room Connector, if you want to bring in those SIP and H.323 devices into a Zoom meeting, whether you have a Cisco device or a Polycom device, it doesn't matter, or even a life-size device or Huawei or, you know, Yilink, you can bring in those systems into a Zoom meeting by simply dialing the meeting ID, or we can even provision and enable one-touch dial for Polycom and Cisco devices. And last but not least, our Zoom phone. If you are looking to migrate your expensive uh, on-premise call manager to the cloud and looking for a native, a full PBX features, a full PBX uh, uh, you know, uh, system delivered from the cloud, 
that's where Zoom phone comes in. So you can have that call manager, but completely hosted uh, through Zoom. Or we can also, uh, you can also, uh, we also have another option we call bring your own carrier, where you can, uh, you know, protect your investment, your current uh, telephony contract. And basically we can do, we can map your DID numbers into, uh, into our Zoom phone in the cloud. Next, please. So uh, a quick one on the Zoom meetings. Uh, you know, with Zoom meetings, you get HD video, uh, up to 1,000 video participants. Uh, of course, gallery view with 49 active participants. Not only 49, but you can get multiple pages of 49 uh, layouts. Uh, of course, you get all the great features, uh, such as the virtual background, one-click start to join. You get the option to record locally or in the cloud with transcripts. Uh, you can enable, disable multi-screen sharing, co-annotation, uh, enable remote control, breakout rooms. And of course, you get all the, uh, the mobile screen sharing. Uh, you can schedule, you can do like, we have Siri integration and so on. So uh, Zoom meetings is available for, you know, uh, not only for enterprise, but also for, you know, consumers. But it's, it's scale. It is reliable and it works from any device. Next, please. So that's the typical layout you get from a Zoom meeting, up to forty-nine, um, up to forty-nine, uh, you know, participants uh, on a on a single layout. We also we just enabled uh, as of you know last week, we have a new layout. We call them immersive scenes. So immersive scenes uh, will allow the host to set a custom background theme uh, for their meetings or create layouts where uh, participants' uh, videos are embedded within a scene that everyone shares, like a, class, like a classroom or a courtroom. So that's typical use case for an educational institution. We're gonna also enable uh, different layouts for financial institutions and for, uh, uh, you know, uh, for government and so on. So that's coming uh, hopefully this month uh, on our next uh, software release. Next, please. So uh, Zoom chat, um, similar to, uh, you know, our competitors, we have our internal collaboration tool, uh, Zoom chat. So you can chat today, uh, you know, during the meeting or, uh, you know, you can use it as just as, as just as a chat platform, like we call it persistent chat. Uh, you can create channels, you can create public channels, share channels, uh, you can share files. Uh, it's very easy to use um, native desktop and mobile clients. It's all the traffic is encrypted. We do not save any data in the cloud. So if you are chatting uh, during the meeting, that traffic is always encrypted end to end. And once the meeting is over, all the video files or whatever you shared during the meeting will be deleted from, from, the, from the Zoom servers. Uh, it's end to end encryption uh, enforced with AES 256 GCM. So you can do one to one uh, group me uh, and group meetings from chat. Uh, we have interoperability with with Microsoft Teams and, and Slack, in addition to tons of applications available on our app marketplace. You can also bring in extra applications into the Zoom chat. So let's say you want to bring in Wikipedia, you can bring in third party applications to streamline your internal uh, workflows. Um, so you can bring in calendar, uh, Google Calendar, in addition to other applications available on our marketplace. Next, please. So let's talk about Zoom webinars. So Zoom webinars, again, what you get from Zoom meetings is, is very similar to Zoom webinars. Uh, same features and functionalities, HD video, uh, you get, uh, it's a, you can, you know, view the webinar from any device, mobile, desktop, conference room, uh, scalable up to 50,000 uh, video attendees, uh, up to not even 300 panelists. You can go up to 500 panelists. It depends on your license. One click start to join. Um, you have the local and cloud recording, and you same you get multi uh, with 
what you get from Zoom meetings, multi-screen sharing, co-annotation, and the benefit of, uh, you know, of the Zoom webinar also, you know, uh, from security perspective, only polling, chat, Q&A, and raise hand will be available to the attendees because the attendees will be in view only mode. So if you have a webinar where basically you have a webinar license for 1,000 attendees, but you want to go above 1,000, either you go with, uh, with an additional license from Zoom or you can also stream live to YouTube. Uh, channel um, or Facebook uh, live or workplace by Facebook. So, but remember that you don't get all the features and functionalities you get when you when you when your attendees are viewing it from from Zoom directly. So, with YouTube, it's just a live stream, and but there's no control on it. But it's always an option. And you, in addition, you can customize your own streaming server. So if you don't have Facebook Live, YouTube, or Workplace, we give you the flexibility to create, uh, to add a custom uh, streaming server. Uh, that's where basically you, you know, there are third party uh, content delivery networks available and you can basically point your uh, Zoom webinar to those services as well. Next, please. So automatic transcription, that's what you get with cloud recording. Um, so cloud recording, once you record in the cloud, uh, all the recorded files will be encrypted end to end and will be encrypted and will be saved in S3, AWS S3 buckets. Zoom does not have access to those files. Only customers have access to those recorded files. And those recorded files can be enabled with with automatic transcription as well. So next please. So what's new and unique to Zoom? All right, next. So in meeting security settings for hosts. So what happened back in during April, we had to, we had to come out with a 90 day security plan. And one of them is to make it easier to the host to control their meeting okay so it's within meeting security settings for host we added that security tab and that security tab provides more confidence to the host to control their meeting so from that security tab you can uh, you don't have to rely on it anymore uh, with this security tab which is unique to zoom you can lock your meeting you can remove participants uh, you can put a participant on hold, uh, disable video, mute participants. You can turn off file transfer in addition to uh, uh, disabling content sharing, disabling recording for specific participants and so on. But one of the unique features that we have is a report a user. So let's say um, something happened in your meeting where you, know, you have a person they have a participant that's not supposed to be part of this, of the, you know, it's not supposed to be part, it's not supposed to be in the meeting. So what you can do, you can report that user to legal. Once you report that user to legal, our trust team, our security team will take it from there and will try to track down that hacker for you. So uh, that's another level of, uh, that's another, uh, you know, game changer when it comes to, uh, securing your your meeting. Next, please. So end-to-end -end encryption. What does that mean? So today, all Zoom meetings are encrypted, okay? And it's encrypted with AES-256 GCM, which is the most powerful encryption algorithm today, okay? Now, with, with encryption, with the standard encryption, we call it enhanced encryption, uh, Zoom still uh, only is still uh, creating the key, is still owning the key for that for that meeting. So if I'm communicating with, let's say, Bob, uh, uh, it's the Zoom infrastructure that is going to provide that encrypted key to the participants. It's not, so it, it's not the host uh, uh, the, themselves. So with end-to-end -end encryption, that means no one, not even Zoom, has access to the encryption keys being used 
right? And it applies to specific customer use cases. So the end-to-end -end encryption feature will be available in technical preview to free and paid Zoom users starting the week of October 18 to 24. So it should be, should be available right now. So this feature can be enabled at the account. It can be enabled at the group and at the user level. So, um, so it can be toggled on and off by the host on a per meeting basis. When it is enabled, this feature encrypts communication between meeting participants, okay, using cryptographic keys known only to meeting participant devices. So end-to-end -end encryption in, Zoom, in Zoom's app means that private meetings, sorry, private meeting keys, are no longer generated in the cloud and distributed to Zoom apps. Next, please. So, so you know the waiting room and we keep adding and enhancing our waiting room uh, feature. That's where basically you park all the participants in the waiting room before you admit them to the meeting. So we are going above and beyond with the video waiting room. So hosts will be able, any host of the meeting will be able to see a guest video when they are in the waiting room, allowing them to see who, who, it, who it is before admitting them into the meeting. So this new enhanced uh, security feature will be available uh, hopefully end of this year. So it's not only seeing the, the snapshot of, the, of that participant, but also seeing the video preview of that participant before you admit them to the room. So next please. Another feature that we released, uh, we are about to release is the meeting reactions and animations. So Zoom will have we will have uh, new animated reactions to make nonverbal communication more noticeable and fun. So these animations will also include an audio element, uh, for example, sound of clapping. And all of the features that I'm talking about, we just released like literally last week. And we keep adding more and more features every day. <coughs> Sorry, next. So another great feature that we are going to release is the audience reactions. So this is typically for webinars. So uh, this is basically empower your webinar attendees to share reactions in real time. So reactions for Zoom video webinars give immediate feedback to the presenter and allow the audience to feel more engaged. Next, please. So that's the biggest one. It's called Zaps, introducing Zaps, okay? And it's going to be available, um, yes, uh, end of this year. So Zaps are apps that you can use within the Zoom platform to help improve productivity and create more engaging experience. So no more switching between multiple applications on your desktop. So now, you can quickly navigate to apps within the Zoom interface to streamline permissions, grant document accessibility, and collaborate on screen. So what are the benefits of, of Zaps? So Zaps help surface all the applications you need to be productive and enable the free flow of information between teams before, during, and after the meeting. So for example, you can have Salesforce and you can put all the notes, you can create all the information on Salesforce before you join the meeting. However, during the meeting, if you want to uh, modify something or add any note or an, add any details on the Salesforce, you don't have to open that application. It's part of the Zoom client. So all you need to do is cl click on the tab, it's called Zaps, and from there, once you select Salesforce or Dropbox or any of those applications, it will be embedded inside the client. So you can take notes on Salesforce 
while collaborating at the same time. <clears throat> so it gives you that accessibility to multiple applications directly from the Zoom client. So this feature is going to, so we have uh, uh, partners uh, participated, uh, partners uh, already more than 25, and we are going to open Zaps to our developers in Q1 next year. So um, next, please. So another unique feature about Zoom is bringing those third-party SIP and H.3 to 3 devices. So if you have a Polycom touch panel or if you have a Cisco touch panel, now you can <coughs> join a Zoom meeting from one click. So you don't have to type in the username or passcode and then uh, the meeting URL of Zoom. All you need to do is walk into the room and just click to join. And that's the power of Zoom. And then again, remember with CRC, with our conferencing room technology, you don't need any gateways in the middle. You just, uh, there's no video interrupt service uh, you have to purchase in order to communicate with a third party device. It's all native to our Zoom client and to our conferencing room technology. Next, please. So let's talk about security. So uh, as of 30th of May, we enforced security. Uh, we enforced AES 256 GCM on all Zoom meetings, Zoom webinars. Uh, and, uh, you know, if, even if you are communicating from a Zoom, uh, from a Zoom room system. Uh, AES 256 bit GCM is the most powerful encryption algorithm today. Uh, we have role-based user security. We have watermark screenshots. <coughs> it's compatible with any firewall today, password protected. We support single sign-on. Sorry, one second. And uh, so if you have like 30,000 users or 5,000 users, you can integrate with uh, Microsoft Azure AD. Uh, you can integrate with Okta, Ping for SSO uh, with SAML or OAuth. So we are SOC2 compliant. We have HIPAA compliance and we also, also FedRAMP. In addition, we are trustee certified privacy and uh, also privacy shield framework. framework. So next please. So we take privacy very seriously at Zoom. Um, so we have authentication, dual factor authentication, video preview, and we also have an attendee consent if someone is recording your meeting. So uh, one thing related to security and one thing to, know, to note, which is really important, is that Zoom will never save your video traffic. All the video traffic is considered data in transit. So if we have a meeting with more than 300 participants, that traffic, that video traffic is in transit. So we never save that traffic. Um, we have the data at rest. So it's not data at rest. The only data at rest is the metadata, which is your, uh, the configuration, the billing information, which is encrypted and saved in, in our data centers, in our AWS uh, data centers. Um, so uh, another uh, important factor is, uh, you know, with encryption, with end-to-end -end encryption, even if you have 500 participants on the call, the quality will never degrade, okay? Will never downgrade. So you will always have a perfect, uh, great experience, even when you enable end-to-end -end encryption. So with end-to-end -end encryption, it would provide you the capability to generate the key instead of uh, allowing uh, that, uh, in, instead of, uh, you know, uh, so, so Zoom will not, will not have access to those uh, encryption keys anymore. So next, please. 
So pre-meeting security settings for hosts, we talked about that. Waiting room is a great option to secure your meeting. Passwords is another great option. You can enforce both waiting rooms and passwords at the same time. You can also enforce join by domain. So you can select specific domains, um, uh, you know, specific domains. If you are going to schedule a meeting, you, would, you can say, I need only domain A and domain B. Uh, those, all, those two domains will be allowed to join that meeting. So you can, again, you know, those are security features and you can add, uh, un, uh, you know, multiple security features per meeting and you can enforce them at the account level, at the, at the at admin level, and even at the user level. So next, please. So Zoom rooms. So Zoom rooms in a nutshell, uh, we talked about it. Uh, it's uh, instead of, so Zoom meetings is a single user joining a video meeting uh, via their personal device, tablet, PC, while a Zoom room basically, uh, it's one to multiple users joining a video meeting in a physical workspace. Uh, it's software based, you can install it today. Uh, if you have a computing device, a monitor and a speaker. So, and it gives you that consistent user experience. Um, very similar to the, to the Zoom client. Yes. Next, please. So uh, Zoom room is perfect for board and conference rooms, executive offices, huddle rooms, and, and training rooms. Next, please. Uh, yeah, you can go next. Audio conferencing, video conferencing, wireless content sharing, uh, join from the calendar uh, is also, uh, you know, uh, available on the Zoom room. You don't have to memorize any meeting ID, no passcode. All you need to do is just go walk in and uh, start your meeting. Next. So Zoom rooms uh, gives you the, uh, you know, uh, it provides you high definition uh, video and voice. It gives you wireless content sharing. Uh, one touch to meet or reserve room and even uh, enterprise remote management. So we have also enterprise remote management. It's from the same dashboard and you can manage those devices from your admin, from your Zoom admin portal. Next, please. So these are our certified Zoom room systems. Uh, that's a turnkey solution, um, you know, such as NEAT, Poly X30 and Poly X50 and even D10. Uh, all you need is a Zoom room license and that you get the full Zoom meeting experience. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so no additional hardware. Uh, all you need is a monitor and, and a power line. That's it, please, next. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a Zoom and Meet. Uh, so it comes with a video bar and a touch panel. Uh, you all, all you need is a, is a, uh, is a monitor and, and a Zoom room license. Uh, so from the tablet, you can schedule a meeting, you can invite participants, you can, um, you have that security tab, which is unique to Zoom, you can control your meeting, remove participants, lock your meeting, um, you know, mute, unmute, and basically switch also, if you have multiple cameras, you can also switch to different camera. Please go ahead. So Zoom digital signage and Zoom scheduling display is part of the Zoom room license. So uh, if you have a Zoom room license, you have the capability to roll out multiple uh, digital signage devices. So that's at no additional cost, okay? Uh, and that's, uh, that's what differentiates us from, from other uh, solutions in the market. Please next. Scheduling display is basically where you can schedule your meeting from the tablet. So if you walk into a conference room, you can see that the meeting is occupied. Instead of going back to your Outlook, from that touch panel, you can reschedule that meeting, let's say, you know, for a different time or different date. Yes, next, please. So um, Zoom phone, Zoom phone is, is, uh, is very, uh, you know, it's basically bringing that telephony to our, to our application. So what we did two years ago, we, uh, we now we are converging our tele telephony service that we have in the cloud with our Zoom meeting service that we have in the cloud into a single core common platform. So now your Zoom client is not only for Zoom meetings, Zoom webinars, it's also your Zoom phone. So now you can have an extension, you can dial out PSTN uh, numbers, 
you can uh, receive incoming PSTN numbers. So it's your Zoom phone, uh, it's your phone system uh, that you can leverage from anywhere and from any location. Next, please. Yes, next. All right, so another option we have for, uh, so the, the Zoom native phone is not available for this region uh, today. Uh, it will come hopefully in the future. But what we have for those customers in this region is a premise peering, uh, also known as bring your own carrier. So you can integrate your own premise call manager with Zoom phone. So now if you want to join a Zoom meeting, you can basically uh, leverage your, your, uh, your, uh, your local telephony provider. And basically that traffic, that call will be routed through your call manager and from your call manager will to, to, to an SPC short session border controller through a SIP trunk. So basically that traffic, that audio traffic will be routed from your mobile device all the way uh, to a Zoom meeting. Next. Yeah, so, so it's one Zoom client. Uh, Zoom is it's one unified app for phone, video meetings, and chat. So it is seamless, uh, seamlessly make and receive. You can seamlessly make and receive phone calls. You can share content and participate in video meetings. You can uh, direct and team messaging. So it's easily elevate phone calls to a Zoom meeting. Um, so yes, next please. I think we're done. So let's look at the um, Q and A questions. Thank you very much, Sam and Risk, um, for shedding some light on what Zoom can provide here. Uh, now the floor is opened for questions, so we'll just briefly go through a couple of them uh, as we run out. So we had one question that was. Uh, when do you plan to have a data center in the Middle East to comply uh, with local regular, uh, sorry, local regulations, like for example, like countries like Dubai and Saudi Arabia? Yeah, uh, Sam, you're on mute. Yeah, I can answer that. So as of today, we do not have a data center. We are working on it for this region um, uh, for, uh, you know, for, because of uh, country countries' regulations. But the closest data center that we have today to close to this region is in India. Uh, we have more than, seven, more than 17 uh, 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 data centers globally today, and we keep add more and more data centers. But for this region, uh, the closest one is the one in India. However, we are working on enabling uh, more data centers uh, specifically for our region in the future. I think it's very important to realize, um, and this is, a lot of people ask about when you're gonna have a data center, local data, this, that, and the other. So this is a kind of a red herring, okay? Let me tell you why it's a red herring. When we have a data center in Germany or in India, it doesn't mean that the data stays exclusively there. You know, it doesn't mean that whatever data, whatever metadata is present in India just stays in India and doesn't go anywhere else. That's not the way a cloud works. So global cloud, the reason why you don't pay much money for things like Zoom is because we have data centers all over the world and the power and the capacity of these data centers helps each other. So data moves around, and as the, you know, the sun rises in one place, sets in somewhere else, the kind of power spreads itself across the world. So the old fashioned concept um, of, if you like, a kind of an on-prem psychology, it's not really relevant anymore, okay? And when people say, well, you know, I don't want my metadata somewhere else. Well, if you buy a server from, you know, any big company, all, you know, they've got, a link to your server for doing updates and maintenance and so on. Your telephone, if you've ever downloaded anything from Apple, is you know your data is in another country in case you didn't know. So what really matters is security, safety, and privacy. And we've got that nailed. For security, safety, and privacy, I'm going to hand back to Riza on my left. We've got that nailed, and that's what really matters. So you're not concerned 
And we've even been dealing with some very big companies in the region, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Bahrain as well. And when we have this conversation, they say, you know what, you're right, you know? And it's not where the data physically resides, it's how secure and safe it is. And I'll hand back to us on that. Uh, another another uh, one. So I just I just want to add one more thing. So what we did during the 90 day security plan, we enabled data routing uh, for specific data centers. So now you as a customer, uh, you will have the option to select which data center your video traffic will go through. Okay, uh, will go to. So we have uh, many data centers. So now you can uh, opt out for uh, data centers in Singapore or Australia. So it's up to you. So you can select which data center you trust more for your video collaboration. Yes. Thank you, Riz. Thank you, Sam. Um, the next question that we have is in regards to training. Um, uh, the question is, if we have training for 30 to 40 people in a class. Uh, and we have multiple Zoom sessions in a single room for a purpose of interaction. Uh, do we consume a massive amount of bandwidth and how can we control that? So for that one, you can enable bandwidth control. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a flag you can set uh, for your account that will allow you to reduce the bandwidth per subnet. So what you can do uh, instead of sending high definition uh, resolution, which consumes around 1.5 megabits per second up and down, you can reduce that, that to a standard definition resolution, which will consume around 400 to 500 kilobits per second. So that reduces drastically your, uh, your network, uh, your bandwidth consumption when uh, you know, uh, hosting Zoom meetings. Um, I'll have I'll ask, get a couple more questions in. Um, one more is, sorry, yes, Munir. Yeah, I really apologize. I have to move to another meeting, unfortunately. Sure. I'll just say one word when I will start the presentation. Uh, thank you, first of all, Risk. Thanks, Sam, uh, for participating. Thanks, you as well, all the attendants for, for, for the webinar. So, uh, about Kalam, Kalam is our partner when it comes to Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. So uh, gents, whatever question you have, you can definitely go back to, to, to Kalam and Kalam will escalate them to us. So thank you very much for, for organizing that look and hope to, to discuss with you soon. Thank you, Jens. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, so we'll just get back to the questions. Um, we have one in regards to uh, the telephone. Um, when we have our own SIP DIDs, is it free to, uh, are we free to bring our own DIDs with a standard user subscription? Well, it's available with business and enterprise and that's part of the Zoom phone license. Um, as long as you have business or enterprise, you can bring in that SIP trunk to, to Zoom phone and then you can map your own DIDs. Um, we have a question in regards to automatic transcription. Basically, they're asking that uh, if the participants speak in languages other than English, uh, is it possible to do auto transcription? And in which languages will it be stored on the server? Would it be in the original language spoken yes. or what was translated into English? Okay, great question. For now, only English is available but we are working on enabling more languages in the future, such as French, Italian, German, and yeah, in addition to others. But for now, only English is supported. Sure. Uh, a quick technical question. Is there any impact on voice quality after enabling end-to-end -end encryption? Not at all. So we rolled out a phase one end-to-end -end encryption. We've been testing uh, aggressively doing stress tests over the past 90 days, even uh, more than 90 days. And the performance is great. Um, uh, even if you're going to have like 500 participants on a, on a single, on a one single Zoom meeting, the performance will never go down. Um, another security question. Uh, what, is, uh, what is the standard for firewall compatibility? 
Firewall compatibility means we have no issues uh, when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to um, you know uh, interoperability with uh, with firewalls such as you know the leading firewall providers such as Cisco, Checkpoint, Palo Alto. So we've proven um, you know so when you when you do when you integrate Zoom when you bring in Zoom to your network. Uh, we you rarely have any issues with those uh, with those uh, leading firewall providers. Uh, so the moment you enable that service, it's usually not blocked because it's automatically detected by those firewalls. Um, two more so uh, no no H.264 issues, uh, no proxy issues, unless there are certain policies set by the IT. We can always uh, work on that with the with the security uh, team on on allowing that uh, traffic outbound and inbound. Sure. I just have two more questions after this. Sorry, One is what? Yes, Im. I think you missed a question from David about the uh, the webinars add on. So I've just... actually answered him. Ah, did you? Okay, brilliant. Yes. Uh, all right. So Sorry, just probably for, for the rest of the, of the audience. So oh, yeah, the sure. web. So for the rest of the, the audience. So webinars are add-ons. So they, we, you, you need the licenses and then add the webinar on the top of it. Thank you, Emma. Um, the question that we have the next one, and we just have a couple left. Uh, what solution do you have for the educational sector and how do you compare it with Google Classroom? Are you gonna take that, Sam? Yeah, I can, I can take that. I'll, I'll take part of it. So in terms of the uh, education solutions that we are, we offer, we have some real uniques for the classroom. Uh, first of all, we have special education pricing. And then secondly, uh, aside from the special education pricing, um, our solution scales. And this is very important because classes have a lot of people in there. You may have a lecture room with a couple of hundred uh, of people there. You may have a class with 30, 40 participants who want everybody to be engaged. Unlike our competitors who only put a few people on the screen and you have to be talking to appear on the screen, with us everybody appears, you get that real engagement. In addition, I mean I could talk for half an hour, but in addition we have very strong uh, security features specifically for classes. Now let me give you a few examples. And incidentally, Google doesn't have any of this. So we're probably a couple of years ahead of Google in this respect. Stuff like, for example, external SSO uh, um, authentication, plus, for example, the fact that we can lock up um, the, uh, the name of the participant um, so that children can't change their names, plus the fact that we've got coming very soon video uh, waiting rooms and we have waiting rooms anyway so we have waiting rooms we have video waiting rooms uh, these are many of the the, 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 the the things we've got easy integration with lms systems such as blackboard and so on we dominate the education market because our solution is really well tailored and we have tremendous integrations uh, with classical lmss as well so the answer is you know whoever asked the question Give me a call. We can talk for a long time or give a man a call. Or is it? Um, we're very, very strong in education. It's our strongest area. Uh, we've got a lot to offer that. Yeah, thank you, Sam. And the last question is, how can we disable the forced login of six times when the Zoom account is locked? That's a question to support. So you, there's no option. Uh, there's there's a setting, but if if you are if you are having an issue with that one, then you know the best way to contact for that issue is to uh, you know to, to open a technical support, and they can unlock that that uh, that option for you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, with that, I think we'll conclude uh, this webinar. I would like to shout out a big thank you to everyone that's attended, uh, Risk, Sam, Iman, and Munir for helping us with this. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Uh, and do remember before you do leave this session, kindly do fill up the feedback form, which is mentioned in the chat window. 
uh, upon submission, you will get a chance to win a free uh, and exciting e-gift voucher that you can use to shop at your local favorite brands. The winners will be announced in a separate of email. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.